Good morning. I hope everyone has had a wonderful week and you're ready to learn something new. Before we pray, I ask that you remember to pray for our missionary family, the Harvey family in Exeter and the work that they're doing there. That uh, remember the prayer request was that people would be saved and that somebody, uh, people in the church would begin to take over in the areas in the ministry and begin working and helping there. So before we begin, let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity you've given us to learn from your word. Help us to love you and to serve you and to obey you. I ask that you'd help the Harvey family as well and help those that uh, are in the church to begin to work and help out in the church as well, like the piano and teaching, and that souls would be saved. And if there's one that's listening today that has never trusted you to be their Savior, I ask that today would be the day that one would receive you and be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I have something here I want you to learn or to listen to and sing with. It is obedience. And I think that this song here is a good theme song for Acts because that's exactly what these early Christians did. They were obedient to God above all else. And the world was one for Christ. Sing along with them. That was a great song. Now, we are in Acts chapter 5. Now, what I want to do <clears throat> is before we get into Acts chapter 5, I need you to turn to Acts chapter 4 to the last verse in Acts chapter 4. Okay? And then we'll go right into Acts chapter 5. Now, I have a story for you. Something happened to me a long time ago. Well, not so long ago, but long enough ago. I was living up in uh, Leak Slip area, and I was waiting to get on the train, and I was traveling, and there was a group of people there waiting for the train, and these women started talking to me, and I started talking to them, and back and forth, and it was about five or so, six, maybe seven minutes into the conversation, and then all of a sudden, one of the women looked at me with her eyes real big and she said, you're an American? You don't look like an American. Well, I mean, my accent kind of betrayed me, first of all. But the fact that I didn't look like American, I had no idea what an American was supposed to look like. In my mind, I was thinking, are you supposed to have funny hats and have, have fireworks going off around us? No, no. What? Americans look like no 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 
But then I started thinking about, well, what do what did the Christians look like? What did they seem like? Well, in Acts chapter 4 and verse 32, we can see what the Christians looked like to other people. When the people saw them around, what they looked like. Let's read that. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. That means they were in agreement with each other. They didn't argue with each other and were not disagreeable. They had the same purpose, which was what? To share the good news with others. And by being agreeable, they were working with each other. Look at the last part of that verse. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. The last part of this verse shows us that the believers shared everything they had. These two characteristics, the fact that they were agreeable and they were working together and that they were willing to share what they had, are very convicting with us today. As followers of Jesus, are we agreeable with other believers? Now, this doesn't mean that we need to agree with someone who's not teaching the truth from God's Word. We're supposed to speak up when someone isn't telling the truth or, preach, or teaching the truth. This is talking about getting along with each other and not arguing over unnecessary things. An example of that would be this. Let's say that your group, your class at school, was getting ready to visit a rest home, a nursing home, with some older people there. And they, you had a choice. The class had a choice to make up boxes of cookies or potted plants. Now, everybody else in your classroom thinks that I want, we ought to have cookies to give to the people there in the home. But you're thinking that a potted plant would be better. It would last longer. But instead of arguing your point because everyone else wants the cookies, you decide, okay, it's fine. I'll go along with everyone else. You choose to be agreeable to help make the cookies and prepare them for the trip. That's what it's talking about. Sharing something is also convicting, isn't it? As followers of the Lord Jesus, are you willing to share what you have with others? It's easy to share the things that we don't really want, isn't it? But when it's something we value, it's a bit harder, isn't it? If we are feeling guilty or convicted about these two things, these two traits, these two characters that were seen in the believers in Acts chapter 4, the good news is that God can help us. God, in the person of the Holy Spirit, enabled the Christians to do these things, and He can make us willing to do and act the very same. But remember this, everything belongs to God, and when He is placed first in our lives, then He will help us to be generous with other things. We see that the believers in the last few verses of Acts chapter 4 took care of one another. They helped anyone who was in need. If they needed to sell houses or lands to help another believer, they did that. And they brought the money to the apostles who gave the money to those who were in need. In verse 36, we are given the name of just one of those Christians who sold land and gave money to the church. It wasn't that he was forced to do that or he was told to do that no law said he had to do that i think that maybe barnabas saw a need and he knew that he had the ability to help that need to take care of that need and he did if you have trusted jesus to be your savior you too can be like barnabas you don't have to sell land but if you need if you see a need in the church you can help if there's paper on the floor or things are messy, then pick it up, straighten it up. 
Maybe if you see a visitor, you can go up and say hello and that you're happy to see them. You can always find something to do to help others. You can be like a Barnabas. These believers were devoted to following Jesus since they had a sincere desire to live a life that pleased God. As we see the desire for the believers to help each other and the apostles continue to share the good news about Jesus. But now we're going to see some people who pretended to be devoted to be followers of the Lord Jesus. Let's go to Acts chapter 5. And here we are going to be introduced to two people named Ananias and Sapphira. Maybe Ananias and Sapphira saw that Barnabas was praised for his generous gift and they wanted people to look up to them as well. We read that they too sold some land and kept some of the money for themselves and took the rest of the apostles. Now, was it their land? Yes, it was. Could they have not kept all of the money? Yes, it was. Did they have to give all the money to the apostles? No, they did not. Did they have to bring it to the church? No, but that was not the trouble. A devoted follower of Christ should be trustworthy. Ananias and Sapphira were dishonest when they brought their money to the apostles. They made it appear that they were giving all of the money that they had received from selling their land. The Holy Spirit enabled Peter to know that they were being dishonest, and the work of the good news about Jesus is very important. And what Ananias and Sapphira did was sin. So they sold the land. And then they brought the money and they said, we sold our land for so much money and here it is. Here's all of it. That was the problem. You see, they had sinned. You too have sinned. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You have done things that are wrong. Maybe you were told to uh, stop playing and come help set the table or pick up your toys and you got mad and you stomped around and stuck your lip out and pouted that sin you have sinned Ananias and Sapphira had sinned as well we also learn that from the Bible that there's a punishment for sin and the Bible says for the wages of sin is death you and I have sinned. We were born with that want to to do wrong. Your parents never taught you how to lie or disobey, but they try to teach you the right way because you know those bad things already. Your sin separates you from God. You have sinned and sin will be punished and Ananias and Sapphira's sin will also be punished. They wanted to appear as if they were generous by sharing the money from their property. God knew their hearts and punished them for their sin. Let's read Acts chapter 5, verses 3, 4, uh, verses 5 and 6, sorry. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came upon all that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. You see, he lied to Peter, but the Holy Ghost or Holy told Peter that what the lie was. Ananias didn't have to give him all of the money. He could have said, we sold the money and we're giving a certain part of the money to the church. But instead, he said, we sold the money for sold the land for this much and we've given all the money. So he lied, but he didn't just lie to Peter. He lied to God. Now, let's read more verses. Let's see what the Bible says. And it was about the space of three hours when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Now, Ananias had just been killed. God had killed him because of his sin and lying to him. And here comes his wife who doesn't know anything that happened. Let's see what happened. Verse 8. 
And Peter answered and said unto her, answered her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much? And she said, Yea, for so much. Again, did she? Did they have to say that they were giving all of the money to them? No, they didn't. Again, we have a lie. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are here at, are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost, and the young men came in and found her dead, and carried her forth, and buried her by her husband. The result of their sin was death. It was example to others that God knows when someone is pretending to be sincere and true and when they're really not true to Christ. When a person comes in, the Holy Spirit comes in to live within their lives. It's kind of like this. It's like a garden hose. The hose is the person who has been saved and the water is the Holy Spirit. We cannot see the water running through the hose, do, can we? But we can hear it, and we can see the results. The water comes out. Now, it's the same with Christians. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but he will make the life of the Christian different. What comes out of the mouth will be different. Our language will be different. Our attitudes will be different. We won't be sulking and pouting as much. Our thoughts and actions will be different because the Holy Spirit lives within us. Now, when a Christian sins, it would be like a kink or something that's blocking the hose. The water is still there, but it cannot get through. The strength of the water cannot come through the hose and the help the water that would give cannot be there. The water isn't affected, but the kink is stopping it from coming through. It is important for those of you who've trusted Jesus to be your Savior to confess any sin in your life. You see, we're not perfect. The Bible, God knows that we will still do things wrong. But the Bible does tell us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Have you ever thought about what confess means? Well, it's simply telling on yourself. What? You're telling on yourself. Just go to God and tell him what you've done wrong. He already knows it, but he wants you to admit it and ask him to forgive. He says if you do that, then he will forgive. I think that's wonderful. If Ananias and Sapphira's sin had not been disciplined, then the work of God would not grow. When it was punished, God was able to continue to work in a mighty way. Many people heard about the good news and believed in the Lord Jesus. The numbers of believers continue to grow, and many who were sick were brought to the apostles and they were healed. The Bible says, and believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of men and women. Now, the religious leaders didn't like it. They saw how that God was working or that the people were believing on Jesus and they did not like it. God was working and people were being saved. Now, you would think that they would be happy to see people coming and seeing that the sick were being healed, but not so. These men who claimed to know God were leaders of the people, and they were to teach them about God. Did they have the same kind of power that the apostles had? No, they did not, because they did not have the Holy Spirit living within them. They were not saved. 
the religious leaders had the apostles arrested and thrown into jail god's enemy tries to stop god's work by making the difficult life difficult for those who follow jesus that would not discourage the followers of jesus believers can have courage to follow jesus because nothing can stop god's work god through the holy spirit gives them courage to trust even when they are arrested and thrown in jail for sharing the good news now what well verse 19 tells us that the apostles were got taken out of jail they were set free by the angel of the lord nothing can stop god's work when god's people fully trust him and obey the angel told them to go and speak to the to the people at the temple all the words of this life and the apostles obeyed and went to preach at the temple can you imagine the shock of the religious leaders when they wanted the apostles brought before them from the jail and they weren't there this news puzzled them then someone told them that they were preaching and teaching at the temple courts a captain and his officers went and brought the apostles before the religious leaders the religious leaders were frustrated and angry with the apostles because they had given them strict orders not to teach in the name of jesus the leaders were getting tired of hearing it and it was because of them that jesus was put to death and intend to bring this man's blood upon us is what they said they wanted this message to stop the apostles were not afraid of these men they spoke boldly that they must obey god and not men and share the good news about jesus with them and this made the religious leaders even more angry and they wanted to put them to death a man named gamel gave the religious leaders some good advice he told them that if the apostles were doing the work of men it wouldn't amount to anything but if it was truly the work of god no one or nothing could stop it and if they tried they would be fighting against god so he suggested that the leaders leave them alone and they followed gamel's gamel's advice to leave them alone but they couldn't just let them go they did beat them before they let them go and commanded them again not to speak in the name of jesus did the apostles do anything wrong or to, to be beaten did they deserve that of course not does this remind you of someone else who was beaten and was innocent jesus suffered and died for your sin he had done no wrong yet he was willing to, he was willing to take your punishment on the cross he died and rose again so that you could be saved the apostles left there feeling privileged to suffer for the lord jesus they didn't run off and hide because they were afraid they faithfully continue to share the good news about the Lord Jesus day after day. Our study in the book of Acts is teaching us how to live a life that pleases God. If you have been saved, then you must remember that you can live for God too. It's not easy, but God will give you strength and courage to stand for him and to live for him and to tell others about Jesus. Now, if you've never trusted Jesus to be your Savior, then you can do that today. Jesus died on the cross for you and rose again so that your sins could be forgiven. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That whosoever means you. You can be saved today if you choose to do so. Remember, Jesus died for you, for your sin, and he rose again. It's your choice. It's kind of like sitting in a chair. If you get up and you take a look at a chair and you sit down in it, have you ever thought about looking around the chair to see if it will hold you up? Of course not. You just sit in the chair. That's faith. And faith is what we need to place everything we have in the Lord Jesus. Now, if you'd like to be saved, you can do that by praying, Dear God, I know I've sinned. Forgive me for sinning. 
I believe that Jesus died for me and that he rose again. Will you come into my life today and save me? In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you've done that, I would love to hear from you. You can email me at childrenchurchbbc at gmail.com. That's childrenchurchbbc at gmail.com. And I would love to show you more about how you can grow to be more like the Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that in spite of the troubles and trials that can come our way, that you give us strength and courage to continue to trust you and obey. I ask that if there's anyone listening that's not saved, that today would be the day that they would be saved. Thank you for your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen have another song for you and again this song goes right along with the book of acts because those early christians what did they do they trusted and obey something that we need to do every day Okay, there's no way to be happy in Jesus other than to trust and obey. Now, I have a little story for you. It's about the clock family. And this is an interesting little story about a family of clocks. And I hope you can learn something from them. Casey was a clock that was just being finished up. He was going to be an alarm clock. He was all excited. His face was clean and he was getting all finished up. And the, his master, the one who was making him, was just finishing polishing up on his face as he began to tell Casey about his family. And he told Casey that he had a very large family. But there were some people in his family that he needed to be careful of, that he needed not to be like them because he was made for a special job. He said, your job, Casey, is to wake people up, to warn them of the time. Don't forget, it is an important job you have. Don't be like your family or some in your family. Then he began to tell Casey about one of his cousins named Slow Clock. Slow Clock was beautiful. She had carvings and she made a beautiful sound at every hour. Gorgeous clock. But pretty soon she thought she was too good to do that. That it was below her to sit and go tick, 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 
tick all day. So she got slower and slower and slower. And then one day she decided she just didn't need to do anything. I can just sit here and look pretty. And that's what she did. She was good for nothing except collecting dust and sitting above the fireplace. He said, Casey, don't be like slow clock. Don't think that you're too good to do a job. Make sure you do your job well. Then he told Casey about an uncle that he had, and this uncle was called Broken Clock. Like Casey, this clock was supposed to be an alarm clock. Broken Clock was supposed to warn people about the time. But they, he kept he, the the person he was supposed to warn kept turning him off, and kept turning him off and go to sleep and wake up late. And Broken Clock got really tired of this. He thought, well, if somebody's not listening to me, I'm just going to quit. And he quit. And the person got angry and took a hammer and broke him because he wasn't doing his job. He said, Casey. The map watchmaker said, now, Casey, remember, don't be like your uncle. Keep on working. Even if people don't listen to you, keep on working. Do your job. Do it properly. And you will be blessed and help people. Well, Casey, there's one more person in your, your family that I'd rather you not be like. And it's your brother. His name is Fast Clock. Now, fast clock works fine, but the problem with fast clock is he works too fast. He started worrying about everything. He was worrying about if he was on time. He was worrying about what time it was. He was worrying about this second and that second. And literally every second of the day he was worrying about, and he finally just kept speeding up and speeding up and speeding up and now his hands they just keep going round and round and round and nobody knows what time it is he is in such a dizzy he doesn't know where he's going or where he's been he's just all over the place he said casey don't get so worried don't get so fretful do your job do it properly you know boys and girls it reminds me of what we are supposed to do as Christians. The Bible says, Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, for ye serve the Lord Christ. You see, you and I, no matter what we do in life, need to do it for the Lord. It doesn't matter if I'm just copying my letters for school, or if I'm cleaning my room. Or if I'm helping with the dishes. It doesn't matter what I do. I must do it for the Lord. Because that's who I serve. That's the one that's important. And if we do our job. Do it properly. Do it the way God would have us to do. Then others will be blessed. Think about that this week. And remember to trust and obey the Lord Jesus and help tell others about him. Now, here are the ways you can contact us. You can write to the church and you can also write me directly if you want this color sheet. You can write to childrenchurchbbc at gmail.com and I will be sure to give you that color sheet. Again, if you want to write the missionary, write me and I will give you the information you need to write our missionary as well. All right, and you all have a wonderful, wonderful week. God bless.